reflective on this Saturday. Being Catter Day, as we know. And uh, a couple of days ago, I had a reminder, you know, these reminders on Facebook that come through. And it said, Hook Murray's back. And that was two years ago, which signaled a year that he's already been on the property. So it's about three years now that I spent time with Mr. Hukumuri. Many of you have probably been online and following the news and you've seen the wonderful article James and Jamie have written in Africa Geographic. And Pumalanga Tourism Agency has also produced an article. And um, I'm not going to get into the finer details as it's all very well known now. I think just uh, a moment on this wonderful Saturday, an emotional moment, I'll be honest. A gentleman who was quite rugged, tough, <laughs> adamant to get his own way, came in from the West and, and it was a bit nerve wracking, I recall, for many of you viewers at home. When he arrived, not many people liked him initially because of Tlalamba being a, a very new cub. She was a brand new little three, four month old cub at the time. Four month, maybe five. And Hukumuri came in from the west. Remember, the interloper, he was called. <laughs> and, uh, well, he came in with swagger and style. And he had some interactions with Tingana and had some interactions with Hosana, as we recall. And initially, as I said, he wasn't everybody's favorite leopard, but he, he grew in character with each new return to the property, each new event. How many times did many of us say we gained to the west of Juma, that is to track down Hukumuri, and how many times did we succeed? How exciting was it? The hook would arrive on Juma, and we would be very excited, very excited. I, I was blessed to spend a very lo long time with him on a couple of occasions as he hunted warthogs. I remember doing a, almost a two hour broadcast of him staring into a hole until the piglet finally came out and he killed it. It was raw power, raw violence in the cat world, but pure beauty. And I know many of you out there are feeling quite sad and quite sort of upset about the whole story, but human wildlife conflict, everyone on the African continent is a real thing. Habitats are, in, are disappearing or diminishing. And uh, wildlife conflicts across the African continent is, is ongoing and will be ongoing as human populations rise. Can't directly blame anybody for that. He was experiencing a lot of pressure. He had been through the wars as we have documented. Definitely didn't shy down from a battle. Definitely went in with guns blazing and uh, everybody will remember his tenacity. <laughs> his, his blind sort of belief in himself. No concern for his body whatsoever. And uh, you know, we, we can just remember the good times. Let's try not to dwell on, on the, the details and rather celebrate the individual. The individual that uh, blessed many of your TV screens, blessed many of our hearts that we saw him live and tracked him live. And we'll never forget that stare. Every guide who worked here, presenter who first saw Hukumori will remember that that stare he had. He had very yellow eyes before he lost one. <laughs> he had very yellow eyes and he, uh, he would stare straight through you, which was quite a daunting sort of thing because we didn't know him. And he'd suddenly just be there, that swagger. He wasn't the biggest leopard in the world, but he carried himself with an enormous amount of confidence. You know, you know that person, he's just, he's not the biggest guy, but there's something about him. And he definitely, um, he lived up to it. Such a name, Hukumuri. 
and so it's a bit of a tribute out to that gentleman who we all know well and love well and know what's happening apart from the fact that I had a bit of a fright so bless him everybody bless all of you with your concerns and comments I hope all the concerns are laid to rest now knowing the full story there's nothing much we can do bless you all on this wonderful Saturday in the spirit of that beautiful leopard